Welcome once again to In Focus, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network, a live discussion call-in program where we look at policies and plans of the government of St. Lucia. I'm Ryan O'Brien, and again with me this morning is my co-host, Lisa Joseph. Well, Lisa, another Thursday, another morning when we keep you in focus. And I am very excited about this Thursday morning. We're going to be discussing Carafesta that just ended Carafesta 14 down in Trinidad and Tobago. I dressed the part. I see that your tie has a bit of color and action going on here. So that's wonderful. And part of the Carafesta, an extension of that, is the Cultural Development Foundation, the CDF. Lots of exciting things happening there. And we'll be speaking with the executive director, uh, along with Junior Frederick, to discuss what is happening with the CDF and how St. Lucia will be benefiting from that. I'm sure mm -hmm. it's this time of the year when many St. Lucians look forward. They always say when you get into September, it's a nice little countdown, it's a nice little cultural period, focusing a lot on St. Lucian culture. So I'm sure that our viewers and our listeners will be looking forward to what our guests will have in store for us today. Is that a hint, hint that your birthday is coming up? Hint, mm. hint. Right, okay, hint, hint. Yes. He's in October. Margaret, so am I. You know, just full disclosure. So we're very excited about the month of October. We want to say as well that we are being listened to on WVENT. Thank you so much for tuning in there. And the it's 93.5 FM. Well, let's take a look at what's happening with uh, news in the last week. Yes, and some of the stories we covered, St. Lucian's formed part of the 2019 class of Chevening scholarship holders. The scholarship program is sponsored by the government of the United Kingdom each year and draws students from across the globe. A formal farewell was held for the three St. Lucians who are taking up postgraduate studies in the United Kingdom. Nisha Charles has a report. Chevening Awards have enabled tens of thousands of international scholars and fellows to study in the United Kingdom. The awards offer an opportunity that, for many, would otherwise be out of reach. Over the years, St. Lucia has produced exceptional scholars who have brought back invaluable knowledge and skills to make a positive impact in their communities. Resident British High Commissioner Steve McCready encouraged the 2019-2020 awardees to make the most of the experience. There's a lot of chance to engage with the other Chevening scholars who come from all over the world. Um, there's a real chance to sort of make it a, a very wholesome experience beyond just the specific studies which you will be undertaking. I think we're proud of that. I think the reason the programme is designed like that is, is because of the, the actual ethos of the Chevening uh, program which is it's not just about getting another qualification it's about preparing the next generation of leaders um, to come back to their countries and to really make a difference in the countries in which you live in. Sharing her experience with the current awardees was former scholar Louise Victor who recently took up the post of executive director of the Folk Research Centre. There's a bit of intimidation because you're an island girl and you're seeing so many people from across the world around you talking about their experiences, talking about their qualifications, talking about their vision and all what they want to do with their lives. And you start to somewhat feel small. And then you begin to articulate yourself and express what you are going off to study, um, what you intend to bring back to your country. And that very manifestation almost one year later, it's very, very empowering. Two of the awardees shared what they hope to gain from the experience. I believe that I have a packed year ahead at UCL and I am just really happy. And I thank Chevening. Um, through Chevening, I will be at UCL doing an LLM and I look forward to my journey. I'm really looking forward to the upcoming year in Manchester. I'm really looking forward to meeting new people and networking and learning. Um, I'm really grateful to Shivnan for this opportunity to be studying a master's degree in humanitarianism and conflict response. And let's see what it brings. Funded by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office and partner organizations, Shevening is the UK government's international awards program aimed at developing global leaders. 
and the Sinusha Solid Waste Management Authority, the Tourism Enhancement Fund, and the Sinusha Hotel and Tourism Association. They've continued to collaborate in the fight towards a cleaner environment. And the latest initiative is a bumper sticker campaign that has been launched. And it simply asks you the question, Gasa, you mad or what? Here's Anissi Antoine. In an effort to reduce indiscriminate dumping of waste in the country, the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association have partnered with the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority to officially launch a car sticker campaign. The campaign, entitled Gas Are You Mad or What?, is aiming to reinforce the correct means to dispose of garbage. Carl Hunter, environmental chair for the SLHTA and property manager for Jade Mountain, explained that the idea developed following a discussion with interns from the Sufre Comprehensive School. The kids rightly said that um, there's no education needed, that people doing this are doing it willfully, that they know full well that this is something they shouldn't be doing. So then we played with the idea, how do we get a message across um, that is reproachful that corrects behavior, um, but is not um, insulting. And so the expression of using that very great local expression, gas are you matter what, came to the being and decided to have that as the title of the campaign. Emlyn Zhe, Information and Communications Manager at the St. Lucia Solid Waste Authority, highlighted some of the many consequences of littering. This present undertaking is a publicity drive which seeks to discourage the practice of littering, a serious solid waste issue for the country made highly visible after the cutting of grass along the country's roads and highways. Not only is litter unsightly, but litter clogs drains. Litter is a breeding ground for pests. Litter harms life in, ha in waterways. Litter is a threat to public health and, of course, litter costs the country millions of dollars to clean up. A total of 1,000 stickers were financed via the Tourism Enhancement Fund. The Gasa You Mad or What bumper stickers are available through the St. Lucia National Trust, the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association and the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. Of Health and Wellness and the administration of the Victoria Hospital have welcomed a very timely donation by the e Club Karaib Association. More in this report. Diagnosing illnesses and diseases are an important component of administering effective medical care to patients. A number of tools and techniques have been developed to aid in the proper diagnosis of illnesses and diseases. One such technology is the echograph machine used to diagnose cardiac conditions. The Victoria Hospital was the recipient of two such machines from the E-Club Carib Association out of Martinique. Senior Medical Officer Dr. Shana Seal Filbert says a donation could not have come at a better time. Over the years, St. Lucia has benefited tremendously, and I say that as a St. Lucian, from the goodwill of our sister French island Martinique, especially in the area of health. So many times we've been able to transfer patients so that they could get services, especially diagnostic procedures done, which we do not offer here in St. Lucia, and we, of course, are extremely grateful for that. As a ministry, we actually right now embarking on projects and programs which focus specifically on cardiovascular disease management, noting that non-communicable diseases, specifically cardiovascular diseases, contribute significantly to mortality here on our island. President of the E-Club Carib Association, Dr. Charles Sensier, is elated that the machines are finally in the hands of professionals at the Victoria Hospital. It was not without listening to Dr. Sinak, who is Dr. Sinak? Is, oh. <laughs> and uh, Joanna Salton, uh, Council of St. Lucia, who, um, who believe in our approach. And a special dedication to Emeric Montplaisir, who was uh, allowed us to, 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 to transship the machines. We are really happy today. The E-Club Carib Association is a service club out of Martinique and hopes that this is the beginning of a fruitful relationship with St. Lucia. 
Well, those are our three news reports on In Focus this morning, and let's have some very interesting stories because if you look at the mix, um, there was this excitement on the face of the recipients of the Shivanin scholarships and the solid waste story is something that we face with every day. And uh, certainly any sort of medical equipment that the country can benefit from. So I'm sure a wide cross-section of the St. Lucian population would have been happy with the segment that we had today as far as our news because it, it would have touched a very wide cross-section of the St. Lucian society. And the one that uh, touched me most, as you put it, uh, the collaboration on the Antelita campaign. I don't think we can again overstate the importance of keeping the environment clean more and more we see in with rain events what happens when we uh, indiscriminate dumping of garbage the littering you know you in a vehicle although it's happening less and less but i think somehow i'm seeing a resurgence of this that people are driving by and they just throw things out of their vehicles or some people now they literally stop their cars get out and haul out a, ba a bag of garbage because maybe they've missed their garbage collection day or perhaps they want to get rid of garbage and it's not a collection day um, in their community so they take it and pass put it at some community hoping that it's a collection day there and we have to become more friendly to the environment it's it has now become a point of survival for us as a people if we don't take care of the environment don't think of it as just a gutter it's not just a gutter. It's a point of survival for us now. And speaking about that, what's happening with the Bahamas, again, very timely, all of these things are lessons for us. And now there are worrying eyes once again over the Bahamas just one week after um, the Hurricane Dorian, that monster storm went through at a Category 5. Um, there's a tropical disturbance that is being watched very, very closely, and it is likely to become a tropical depression or storm by, by Friday and could pose a threat to the Bahamas, Florida, and other parts of the southeast coast, or the Gulf Coast, as it is called, um, including areas devastated by Hurricane Dorian. And the tropical disturbance is currently located over the southeast of the bah um, Bahamas, with clusters of showers and thunderstorms extending from eastern Cuba northward for a few hundred miles. And these um, convective clusters have become more persistent over the past 24 to 36 hours. So that's why they're watching it very closely. Now, the Hurricane National Hurricane Center has scheduled an Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter mission, a reconnaissance, um, for late this afternoon to determine exactly what's happening with this weather system. They're calling it Invest 95L. Now... If this system continues to show signs of organization, the Hurricane Center may designate it as a potential tropical cyclone later today. This special type of advisory allows the National Hurricane Center to issue watches or warnings before a tropical depression or storm actually forms providing more lead time and we know with how fast these things develop the more time that you have to prepare the better for us now in this case we may see a tropical storm watches or warnings being issued uh, for parts of the bahamas including the dorian uh, devastated northwest bahamas so we're talking about the abaca islands as well as grand bahama here is the tricky part. Where this system um, tracks has become yet another challenge in forecast, because remember, the meteorologists, the forecasters, couldn't really tell what was going on with Dorian. They would forecast one thing, then something else would happen. We're seeing this with this weather system as well. And so a number of numerical and forecast model tracks have trended farther east and north, suggesting a track near Florida, the Bahamas and the southeast coast is possible this weekend into early next week. So the bottom line is the forecast is highly uncertain and interest from the northern Gulf Coast to Florida, the Bahamas, Georgia and the Carolinas have been asked to monitor the latest forecast for the system very closely. Now, the next tropical storm, if it does become that in the Atlantic Basin, it will earn the name of Umberto. Spanish, a bit Spanish. Spanish. Don't like that. 
Umberto. Because I'm remembering Tomas. Yes, sounds very powerful indeed. Sounds very powerful. I'm scared because you know that leading into the hurricane season, the forecast was we were going to have two to three uh, uh, strong category storms. So with what has happened with Dorian, I mean, I'm just a little on edge. And I think it's not just about being on edge, being nervous, being concerned, but it's about taking the necessary precautions. And we can't um, emphasize that enough. So let us all try to be as very prepared as possible. We can never fully prepare for winds of 185 miles per hour, but certainly we can do things that can mitigate what that impact would be. And so closer to home, while this is happening in the Bahamas, recovery efforts going on, by the way, international support is being rallied. And just to remind you that St. Lucia, the governor of St. Lucia has already donated 100,000 US dollars along with some of the other Eastern Caribbean islands. And the bank accounts are open at the various uh, uh, banks here in St. Lucia. Let us all play our parts. The Red Cross is also receiving donations. So we can all play our part, but closer to home, we have to keep our eye on some weather systems. Tell us yes, about that, right? Yes, we do. And just quickly, just before you look at that, um, also to mention a number of organizations, I know the NYC as well has joined in and trying to get some really supplies, and that will be over to sister organization in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And just on what you said there to that weather outlook, um, no pun intended, but when it rains, it certainly pours. It's and certainly if, pours. if the Bahamas and parts of Florida and in the those parts of the United States on the, the eastern seaboard, they are going to be in for it if this materializes into a, a similar pattern. And just to finish off on what is oh, this, the comment from Ms. Jean in the, the local report, and suddenly so when you pass, and she mentioned, which was which really struck me, after like they cut the grass on the side of the road, yes. suddenly so you have to say, whoa, 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 with all these things actually there, you know, they see the amount of garbage, especially plastic bottles, it's really incredible. I, I don't want you to see inside my car, but it's not always the cleanest. You know, so I try to, as much as I can, harbor it there and then collect it and dispose of it much But you better. still look good driving in it, though. Oh, my goodness. Just saying. But uh, you see it on the outside, not yeah, on the inside. I mean. That's a good thing. Of course. So, locally, it's on the tropical weather outlook, an area of low pressure associated with a tropical wave located about 528 miles or 850 kilometers east of the Lesser Antilles. It's moving westward at about 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. The moisture and instability associated with this wave is expected to affect the region from today. Another tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers an hour. A third tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 12 miles per hour, 19 kilometers per hour, and some slow development of this system is possible during the next few days as it moves westward over the tropical Atlantic. So it's really getting busy. It's getting very busy and we enter in the peak season for the um, Atlantic hurricane season, yes? Yes, Lisa, so probably a good time for us to take our break on In Focus this morning. We're heading off to St. Lucia. Sweet melodies in the heat. Everybody's on the road. We jump in for one goal to where the soak up play. Our culture on a display. Everybody say, We find a special way to see the people playing. Everybody celebrating. The music sounds so sweet. It's the only way we feel it. I'm proud of where I'm from. I need you to understand. I am a Saint Lucia no matter how. So sweet, it's only we who feel it. I'm proud of where I'm from. 
Sarah for St. Lucia, Helen of the West Indies. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Bon la mer, c'est un bon place pour un bon temps, mais c'est faux qu'on ait si un tsunami. Sous bon la mer, il faut sentir qu'il y a un fond de l'air pire. Baisser, couvrir le corps, et espérer que l'on ait un bon bout, et qu'on ait un bon bout. Sous bon la mer, il y a un bon bout de l'air qui a quitté la vie. Qu'on ait un bon bout de l'air. Sous bon la mer, il y a un bon bout de l'air. Qu'on ait un bon bout de l'air. Sous bon la mer, il y a un bon bout de l'air. Quand vous mettez le prix de l'eau pour que vous vous donnez, et le troisième étage est en train de se faire. Les autorités annoncent que ça descend. Quoi, 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 vous mettez le prix de l'eau? Apprendre les signes de tsunami. La PEPA n'est pas assez de temps pour annoncer un tsunami qui a approché. C'est une commission par le groupe Management des Arts de Biefort et le Place Management des Arts en Saint-Lucie. Elle est financée par l'Agence pour le Développement International Amérique, Bureau d'Assistance des Arts de l'autre pays. Life is in you. The gift of life is in me. A red and rich supply for life that flows and helps us to survive. Without it, I am dying. You share it, I am living. Without it, I am dying. You share it, I am living. On you I am dependent, don't let me down A pint from you I'm needing to turn my life around So come along, donate, donate, don't wait My heart is beating Staying in focus and we move into our next segment and certainly Lisa gave you all the preamble and really set the stage for it and we're getting things all jazzy here and getting ready for our next segment. We also remind you that we are live on WVENT so if you're listening we say good morning to you and welcome the 93.5 and we also invite you to be with us on our social media platforms and you can also be part of the discussion at the final segment of the program. You can call us with a couple of questions to our guests, 468-2162. Well, Lisa, you got your guests well introduced, probably give them a much more yeah. formal introduction to In Focus. You know I've been talking about Cari Festa since yes. they left, right? Yes, even so before. Yeah, you know me, I'm always excited about the arts. I'm excited about what's happening. I felt so much pride as a St. Lucian when I got the videos back and it was just an, a marvelous moment. So I was there with you in spirit in Trinidad and Tobago for Cara Festa 14. We want to say good morning to Drinia Frederick and also to Mrs. Ramona Henry Wynn 
uh, the executive director for the Cultural Development Foundation, will be having a very lovely discussion this morning. And I think I did say a wonderful time we'll be having talking about the arts, talking about how we're moving forward with it and how that really helps our overall development as a people. So let's start with Cara Festa. Once it was said that, you know what, Senusha is going to participate. What was the thought process that went into, well, what are we going to do once we get there? Okay, well, this year we decided to um, change things and create a concept. Um, it was basically those persons who are participating will take part in every bit of entertainment. So we're looking for persons on a broad scale, persons who are capable of singing, who are capable of dancing and acting, and of course, doing some of our cultural forms that are found in St. Lucia. So the concept was simple. Um, the theatrical production, all the persons in the theatrical production, these are the same persons that will be doing the Laos, a version of the Laos Festival on stage. The Laos Festival, what we did, we took them for a process of orientation, which is also in keeping with CDF's mandate in terms of cultural preservation and that form of transmission to the next generation. It was the same persons doing the masquerade, and we wanted to do things that had not been done at Carifesta before. For instance, a jab ritual on its own as a standalone piece. So all of those persons um, form part of that concept. We also extended it towards craft, where we um, encouraged persons and selected persons to in terms of 758 books, which is all St. Lucian books. Um, of course, St. Lucia has a long literary tradition mm -hmm. and we would like to showcase that as well. Um, Membet, Christine, um, Zipcode, Lynn Bristol, all of those persons were part of the contingent and there were two independent persons who came on and formed part of the contingent, St. Lucia School of Ballet, and they were doing a contemporary piece called Belilish, done by Richard Ambrose, choreographed by Richard Ambrose, which the focus was on um, masculinity and manhood in terms of that, and Hayden with silent scars. And I think it was Brenda Calix with um, a one woman oh, play. Pretty. Yes. So that was a contingent, 80 persons, and each component to perform at Caravesta over the period of two weeks. In terms of the Laos Festival, we always thought that we would achieve our mandate in terms of, again, that transmission. We took the participants down to Bellevue to a Laos sales so that they can experience it for themselves. They can ask questions. And um, you would not believe that those persons had not interfaced with the festival on any level at all. And no, I believe it. <laughs> and that was the first time and some of the comments that were made were, why wasn't I taught this at school? And why throughout my schooling I was not exposed to this? And here I am on a Sunday afternoon and I'm enjoying this. And so we tried to kill two birds at one stone, that transmission, reinforced training, and strive towards CDF's new fetch of producing qu a quality and a standard to set the bar in terms of performances. Now, I know that while exposing what is traditional is very important um, for that cultural preservation, but everybody talks about <coughs> it in the modern times. So let's make it more sexy by making sure that the younger people can gravitate towards it. Mm -hmm. What was the thought pattern there in whether it was necessary to sort of to adapt um, our traditions to make it more appealing f for this modern era? Um, I seriously adaptation because um, for us you have to pro you have to um, preserve the traditions. You're not going to lose that, but you want to ensure that you can bring your younger persons to be a part of. Uh, so you can also present a version that would attract them. You're not diluting your culture, you're not diluting your traditions in the process, but you want to ensure that you can pass on the mantle because we know what the festivals are like. 
you know how persons respond to it, how persons generally respond to culture. So we're trying to change that mindset of ensuring that you put out something that will attract whatever age group you come from. It will attract you to be a part of, because without people being a part of, it will, of course, go under the carpet. So you want to ensure that you're creating not just a product, you're preserving, you're creating a product that will attract all ages so that, we c that there's that continuum. So that when the older persons, they pass on, you have those younger persons who are already involved. They already appreciate and understand what the art forms are so they can be a part of it. So that I see mm -hmm. if I'm hearing you right, it's not about adapting to the new era, but it's just getting persons involved in it. Because, the, and Gina, you made that point. Mm -hmm. Once the young people got to immerse themselves in what that what our traditions are then they, they become woke as they say now mm -hmm. and so that they understood but, but you can to still do something mm -hmm. you have to know what, know what, what you're it doing is. And, understand. and if you don't know what it is and you don't understand it then you cannot innovate and you cannot create because whatever that you're creating it has no root no basis so that is the whole thrust behind it and if you look at a little folk tale again that is the basic stories we were told as children to frighten us so that we won't go off with strangers, <laughs> the lady in white. Um, and it, it's ironic that it's two, those persons are 19. What they did, again... The creators. Yes, yes. the writers, um, Monique O'Geese and Jesse Myers. These young persons went to FRC and sat down and did weeks of research in the library reading up on those myths and legends i think uh, someone told me they were like kids in a candy store and they took that and created something based on those uh, myths and legends and created a, a structured play based on that that really captures the essence of Yes, this is St. Lucia's myths, folks, and legends. And if you didn't know what a larger bliss was, you kind of got a view that, okay, this is what this is. And it really spurred you on to find out, but what really is that? I, I must go and investigate. Let me ask somebody, what is the story behind it? How did it come about? I know there's a stage version, but they try to remain true as possible to it. And I think that is the lesson that, that we have to learn, that we have a wealth of tradition, we have a wealth of culture. We must get to know it, we must get to understand it, and that is the only way you can innovate. And of course, discover yeah. ourselves. Yeah, yes. absolutely. But I'm a bit yeah. intrigued on the comment in that there are some persons who are not in exposed to that particular part of our culture at any level at all. So then it has me thinking whether, because I know within the schools, the traditions are observed. And uh, you find that, let's see, the same Laos, you find that school children are exposed to that. So what you have happening right now, what do you think has caused it? Is it because within the schools it's limited to a particular section or a certain number rather than the entire school population? Or is it that the children who are involved at that stage don't really continue with it? What do you really attribute it to that you would have so many persons maybe not really being exposed to the cultural um, practices? <laughs> It's, it's a multiplicity of things. Okay. Growing up, <laughs> you, I, Junior, we were taught a lot of the history of St. Lucia. Okay. We knew who Duns and St. Omar was. We knew who Charles Gade was then because we had it in the literature that we studied at school. But it was removed. So that knowledge base, that information base is not there anymore. So this is where the CDF would have to come in to ensure that we re-educate, because the knowledge is there, but, but it's to share it, especially with the younger persons. Because of course, you go into the communities, you speak to the older persons. They very well know all of the stories, but is it being passed on? So agencies like the FRC, the CDF, and all of the other agencies involved in the development of arts and culture, it is our mandate to ensure that we find a way of bringing that knowledge out of ensuring that St. Lucians are educated in what is St. Lucian, what is our folklore, what the, the way we live, all of those things, they're hidden, 
we need to bring it out. Or we have to start at the core, which is within the school system. And this but is where our programming is now focused. We're trying to ensure that we make inroads in the school because you well understand a school curriculum over a year is set. Yeah, we um, agencies like the CDF, the FRC would want to advocate for more of St. Lucian folklore and St. Lucian culture to be included in the curriculum so you don't have that gap. But whilst we work on having those things happen, as agencies, we need to go into the schools and ensure that we inculcate what is uniquely, authentically St. Lucian in our, in our children. If we don't do that, then we would have lost the battle. I think you also need the reinforcement, the reinforcement. at the household level as yeah, well. Absolutely. Because uh, on a Sunday afternoon, for example, if Gina's um, 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 recall, mm -hmm. If uh, parents don't say, well, okay, you want to go out into the community, you want to go, some th something is happening somewhere in Bellevue, mm -hmm. let's just take that family trip, and you mm -hmm. go down and you enjoy, mm -hmm. it becomes something that you're doing. I mean, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm a little uh, concerned about what's going to happen to our Creole, for example. I've met several young people, and I don't know if any of them were in the Carifesta pool, but the speaking Creole is a challenge. I mean, it's a challenge for me too, but at least, I can do I something, it, yes. but to, I'm, I'm meeting young people now, and, and they know you say bonjour, you say saka fed, and like what? 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 What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a little concerning again the transmission mm -hmm. that it's not happening because at the household level, for example, I was not allowed to speak Creole, and in the household, so my grandmother that was her way of communicating. She would speak Creole, but we were only allowed to speak English to her. And so can you imagine now I not having that sensibility? So I would simply raise my job. We speak in English, that's it. There's no reinforcement at home. Maybe in a school you do a little something, but nobody's really encouraging you to move that forward. So my child simply just speaks English and that's it. So that transmission, I think that perhaps we need to think of all of the various levels at which we can encourage the continuation of, of our culture. Yes, that is so, but you also have to remember, I grew up in a home where um, Creole was not spoken. But when I went to school, the language was all around me. Uh, when I went to the market, the language was all around me. When I went to the supermarket, the language, but even though somewhere in your subconscious, it is to awaken that subconscious mm -hmm. and somebody could have an entire conversation in Creole, I will understand. So it's to awaken that consciousness and it's on another level of that patriotism. And for me, this Carifesta, I got to see a level of patriotism that um, it's beyond me. It's beyond Carifesta, it's about St. Lucia. Because I can tell you that for the two weeks, the um, persons who were there performed almost every other day. And um, it was performances not, not like once a day, but twice for the day. So what would propel you to go beyond, I'm tired. Um, what would propel you to go beyond, boy, oh, this is a lot, but I'm doing this for, my it is country. no longer self. It is mm -hmm. no yeah. longer self. And I am there singing in Creole, and I am proud of that. And I, this is me representing. And um, it doesn't matter, but this is, this is the joy that I feel because of who I am. And I think um, St. Lucia got rave reviews throughout. I think from the first day of the opening, um, when we came into the Savannah, there was a buzz. And every radio program, every television program would look out for St. Lucia. And by the time we did St. Lucia night, that was it. Um, when we came to Queen's Hall, I thought, well, maybe a few persons would come. When I turn around, the place was 700 people and it was packed. Was packed yeah. And um, we brought a few programs and we gave it out and people were grumbling they didn't get one. Mm -hmm. um, that shows you the, 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 the level and those young persons, hats off to them performing at that level where we got a standing ovation. And it's not just a standing ovation of St. Lucians who live in Trinidad, but it's Trinidadians and people throughout the region. 
And um, th to me, that is what it is, that I can reach that standard. And we tend to believe that because St. Lucia is small, then everything that we do is not significant, and that isn't so. I know, and we can have impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, yes, it, it's definitely time for one of our breaks in our program today. And we know that today we're going to give it a little special. We're going to keep yeah. the theme and everything on. So I'll be during the break. We'll get a bit of a feel of what Joyna just spoke about and how exciting St. Michelle was at Carrie Festa 14 as we take this break. So you want to leave, huh? You think you can? You want to leave? Huh? Oh, you, you want to dance? You want to dance? <laughs> Try and live your life without me. You are a graceful woman. You can take the jumet out of the ghetto. <laughs> she will always be a jumet. Never step foot in my house again. Never! Come on, Rick. Give it to me. Poor Jabish, man. Oh child, I tell you, don't take no back pressure from me. You can't have people walking all over you like that. It's about time woman starts standing up. It's breaking my heart to see that I can't do nothing to help you. No, man, evil. I never want to be with another man ever again. They should just disappear. Better yet, fall off a cliff. That's an interesting idea. <laughs> oh. What do you say we try it out? See if it's true. Try it out. Oh. Well, let's just say if there were a way where we could take all good for nothings and give them exactly what they deserve. And you, my dear, would be the cause. But before we go through it, I have to be sure that you're serious. Are you sure? Michael, I'm serious. You sure? You're real sure because you can't take it back. Oh, I have nothing to lose.
Chemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rice St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Thanks for staying with us in focus. And for a while there, I didn't want to come back on set because mm. uh, that little clip from a little folk tale, La Jablesse, really interesting. And I wonder the, the inspiration would have really had to be in there. And you could have felt the audience and the feedback that, that you got even while the event was put in. And tell us a bit more about a little folk tale. Well, as I said, it was written by Monique Ogis and Jesse Myers. Um, it's I think three or four children who are at a week for their uncle T-Bab and they go into his room and they discover this chest and they open it and find this book and they begin to read the stories and reenact them. So the first story is the story of a large abyss. Um, this woman, she meets the man of her dreams and then she has a life of abuse and um, she goes back into the village to a dance he meets her there and he breaks her leg and beats her 
and the owner of the bar you know somebody who owns a bar or a shop they know everybody's business they, they, they or everything about your life um, but the owner of the bar what's intriguing about him he made a pact with the devil years ago to collect souls and that book that they're reading he's filling it with those those stories of all the souls that he has collected so you kind of see this sort of analogy of the, the, that one the, the Bible sort of okay and their stories would be told and be left there for generations so the larger bless she her leg is broken when he gets at a point where her back is against the wall the man has kicked her out and he offers her a deal for revenge would you take it your leg is broken you have no way to live you have a marriage an abusive marriage you're at a point where you're at your ultimate low she takes the deal but you know every deal is a, a price there's a price to pay there's a price to pay and she transforms and she comes back and she takes revenge on her husband she throws him off a cliff now you know that's the myth of the larger bless um beautiful woman in the middle of the night lures men towards her and throws them off a cliff so they have kept true to the traditional element of the base of the root of the story and created something, something else around else. okay the children reenact another story of a sukuya now we know s traditionally a sukuya is female but in this case they've made it a male and he wants eternal life he's an old man and he was beaten up by some robbers from the same shop and Tibab tells him well here's a deal for eternal life you have to steal from the youth you know the younger the life the better and he takes a deal because he feels that this is the way to go and he turns into a sukuya and he's forever the blood of um, infants and young even in one of the scenes there's a baby crying that leads into the next scene with the bowl arms where it addresses the issue of abortion this young girl who bought children and she takes her own baby and smothers it and dumps it in a bin because she wants a fresh started life and she goes off and Tibab takes that baby turns it onto a bowl arm and they come back for her and, and they sort of eat her to death so you have that that sort of running story then the next story is a kokba this woman a single mother um asking her boyfriend for money to take care of the child i mean that's a similar story and they tell her well you know what you'll have to do for it and then she's tired of that the child feels embarrassed by her because she's a cleaner in the shop and the shop owner well this time this one he really curses he gives her a few shots and she's drinking and carrying on about her life and he offers her that deal and she takes it and she turns into this dark spirit of the night that comes back and strangles her her child's father in his sleep again the kokma when you're asleep you're between sleep and wake you feel somebody on your chest that heaviness on your chest so that reference is drawn to that and i think the last story is about tibab himself how he became that he was bullied um he was the last of many siblings he was not he felt his life was worth nothing and the devil said ah but look i can show you what all what you can be all you have to do is to collect souls i'm giving you this book and he takes that deal but the whole play addresses the issue of the people who even live in that village they're all involved in some form of what we call cheboa where they're all part of that ritual everybody believes in that the people with the candles on stage they form part of that ritual so it's all within that realm and i think it addresses the duality of saint lucians and i think mm -hmm. west indians of we go to church we worship but we still hold on to some sort of our african mm -hmm. religion mm -hmm. belief i mean something happens to you or are you family <laughs> so it addresses that whole sense and i think that's why it has that universal universal appeal yeah. well, finally it from also, the it Go ahead. also addresses the social mm -hmm. ills right. that persons are confronted with abortion um 
abuse, muscle abuse, and yes. all of those other things, you know, it addresses those issues within even the traditional art forms of St. Lucia. Yes. And so bringing that to make it topical, something yes, that, you know, absolutely. Yes. Yes, a conversation <coughs> starter. So you yes. see where it can appeal to the younger person. Yes, you've yes. Taken where the that innovation comes in. And you've innovated mm -hmm. it with societal issues. Yeah. Yes. Well, finally, for me and Kai Fester, mm -hmm. um, I know that you really put in a lot of hard work and there's a particular aim that you're doing going to these events whenever they're put on. And uh, you look to get out of it, you expose solution culture and creativity, but I'm sure you also take the opportunity for networking. You look to see how well you can get your artists I and creative people exposed to the wider region mm -hmm. and at the same time enhance Lucia's reputation within the region as a place about with them. a lot of creativity. Mm -hmm. let's, spe let's speak about that. I want to highlight the St. Lucia Tourism Authority because they sponsored um, the whole uh, Carifesta contingent. They gave um, promotion and we went with the theme St. Lucia Let Her Inspire You. And I think that's what it did and I want to show the mileage that was gotten out of the arts during that period of time. If you didn't know about St. Lucia, where it was, um, you've never been there, you wanted to go. Um, what was so special about these people and their performances that, that drew you in? And I think the mileage on that in terms of um, publicity, branding, um, is tremendous. And it goes to attribute the power of the arts and how we can use that um, to sell St. Lucia. And that's what it proved, I mean, mm -hmm. maximum. Um, if persons who had never heard of St. Lucia, I mean, you've seen this, now you can go on Google and say, oh, and people came up to me, I'm coming to St. Lucia. Boy, looks like there's a lot of things to do there. And then I, I went and read up on it. Boy, I heard about the Pitos. So that, in a nutshell, is the power of the arts as a marketing tool. And it's not something that's foreign that we used to market. It is our essence that we use and we we took to us another level and we said there, this is what you can experience. And, and for me, that, that, that is the leap that, that we have made. But for me, <coughs> there was also another dimension to that. You created a platform for exposure of St. Lucia's talent. You know we have a pool of a wealth of talent in St. Lucia. So it gave the young persons an opportunity to showcase what they're capable of doing. It also presented an opportunity to be scouted because you just, there were so many leaders from the Caribbean um, at Carifesta. And not just leaders, you had uh, visitors, you had filmmakers, you had a number of persons. It presented an opportunity for them to showcase what they were good at, to also showcase their potential. So that way, you, you just never know an opportunity may come just out of this experience, this exposure, this platform. And I thought that because when mm -hmm. I watched uh, the performance, we did the, the performance in Tobago, you yes. did have yes. a performance mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and watching the, the chateaus, and mm -hmm. it was just marvelous. Can I say, what well, beautiful singing voices. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, yes, I wonder if some, anybody there interested in signing up these, <laughs> these right. performers, because it was great. And, I, and to speak to your point, Rina, I did hear afterwards um, in just an interview um, segment where the Tobagans, they are not familiar with the Creole at all, <laughs> but they were so receptive. The music was so moving and they, they you know, just being able to interpret the rhythms. Mm -hmm. And for them, it was an enjoyable thing, even if they had no idea mm -hmm. what was being sung, they thoroughly enjoyed it and they got an understanding of what St. Lucia was about mm -hmm. and what being St. Lucian is all about. I, so. because a report, mm -hmm. I think it was this week that that event was aired on Trinidad television again. And my friends told me, boy, they're really playing this, you know, they're really playing this. <laughs> um, so you get a sense of um, the impact that we have made. So I think mm -hmm. if we, again, with CDF's mandate, we go out and we, with our collaborators like FRC, National Trust, and we go out and we educate our people and awaken them and reacquaint them. And we start to think of innovating how far we can reach. 
and building the talent yeah. pool, which is Absolutely, important. Absolutely, because I remember being at one of the um, directors of cultures meeting, where, culture meeting while I was in Trinidad, and uh, the gentleman from, I think he's, he works at the Minister of, Ministry of Culture of Antigua, and he said to me, I want your group to come to our folk festival next year. So you see right away the, the observation of what the talent that presented itself created an opportunity for St. Lucia. So some of these very persons who performed at Carifesta will get an opportunity to perform in other islands within the region, within the diaspora and beyond that. Now, how can people at home, <coughs> just um, building from that, exposing our people to what their Carifesta experience was like? Any idea of a road show, anything in the making? <laughs> well, there's <laughs> talk of that, but that has to be confirmed. But I can tell you that um, it's in the pipeline, and um, this is just the beginning. Um, it's a platform in terms of discussions with CDF and the way we're going to start a national theater and dance, dance company, company. Mm -hmm. and to do training in the area of the arts where we've taken those persons who have um, come from the theater arts curriculum and take you to the next level. And that is where we're heading. Oh, beautiful. So because let's expand on that yeah. now. Very often you find um, <coughs> when there's a call for St. Lucia to be represented, you're literally scrambling trying to find persons. But if you have a core persons that forms part of a national body of theater and dance, you can just, once you get that call, you have them right you yeah. know, at your door. So you and you know they're prepared. They are prepared. Yes. So you don't have the, the, the struggle of trying to get them ready, you know, costuming. All of that would have been in place. So once call comes, St. Lucia is ready. And this is where, as a CDF, we want to take St. Lucia's arts and culture. All right. So let's talk about this <coughs> refocused mm -hmm. mandate for the CDF. I know a lot of people are wondering, well, what is the CDF doing? We, but, but why are they organizing La Wars? We're not hearing anything. They're not pushing it. Because that used to be the focal point before. Mm -hmm. Now we are at crossroads and we're moving in a different direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we go into break, perhaps we'll go to break now. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we'll talk about what that refocus for the CDF is about. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to be heard. This means that every consumer who is dissatisfied with a good or service has the right to lodge a complaint to the provider of that good or that service. This should be the first point of lodging a complaint. Ensure that the receipt as proof of the transaction is available. Clément la terre can change. Et ça qui a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. D'eau de l'eau et de la prendre l'eau qui a détruit les animaux et les plants. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud et qui a tué place qui se présente dans la gravité. La mer choua qui a aussi changé de manière se présente qui a quitté de l'autre côté et qui a allé à l'autre côté. Cette liste qui a contribué en petit en gaz en l'espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait pour assurer qui nous baissait à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Tout m'a rien changé. Il y a chaque année, depuis que nous tout au niveau de la terre, Kabulé gaz, l'huile et le chèbon. Et ça, quand on cause la terre venir à chaque plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire tout le même, c'est pour adapter. Fait tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause des changements climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. Pratique quand nous pouvons abattre des manches en temps cyclone et godlo. Construit un canal pour de l'eau couille bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui canal là par les ordi. Fait tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps changement climat ça. Trouvez plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger corps et tout notre cette lycée.
Thanks for staying with us. We continue with our discussion in studio, in focus, and we're looking at things happening in the CDF. We had a major focus on Cardifesta 14, and just reminding you that we have in studio Ms. Junior Frederick, Director of Events and production. and production of the CDF, and also Ms. Ramona Henry Wine, the Executive Wayne. Director of the CDF Wine. Win, win. She's mm, winning all the way. Must win if wine for sure. Yeah. So it's on my mind. And remember, you hinted at my birthday is coming up soon. So we're going to have hint, hint. Hint, yes. Okay. Hint, 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 hint. All the time. So let's look at some of the festivals that they also put on. Lisa, I know you're keen on going in, in that direction. Yes. Oh, but of course, Margaret coming up. Hi, you mean? Hint, hint. Um, <laughs> but we, right. So as we as we will flesh out what the CDF is, is doing, we were talking before the break, the refocus of what's happening with the CDF. And so there's a shift in what those core responsibilities of the CDF would be and perhaps funneling out um, uh, responsibilities to your partner organizations and so forth. So explain to us what the CDF is doing right now. <coughs> Currently the CDF's mandate is... Um heads towards training, promotion, and development. In the past, CDF was heavily immersed in events, like carnival and the likes. So we sort of uh, lost our way in the process. So we had to pull back, introspect, and refocus, which is what we did in 2013 when CDF rebranded. So for us, while we may still do, we have an output of event for anything that we do, but for us, the focus is on training. Training and the promotion comes through the events that we do. <coughs> training to ensure that we develop minds, we develop individuals, we develop talents. So this is our main focus as a CDF. And uh, coming out of that, you find in the new dispensation, we have been doing a lot of training programs even on the, the, the resources that we have, we try to stretch it. We try to collaborate with other agencies in order to fulfill our mandate because, as you would well understand, the, the resources that are available are meager. So in order to ensure that we do work that was what, what was mandated to the CDF, we try to collaborate with agencies like the Folk Research, the National Trust, the... Archives. At St. Lucia National Archives, the Events yeah. Company, the SLTA, you, 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 the Heritage Tourism section within the ministry. We collaborate with them because sometimes what you find there may be overlaps in what we do. So I think we strongly feel that rather than um, wasting the resources, the mega resources, why not look at what each other do and try to work alongside each other. We also work with the creative industries. So we work with the other agencies where there are commonalities in our mandate. And having done that, we are able to fulfill the work that we have been mandated to do. So how do you now um, decide on what uh, the training areas would be, perhaps to mm -hmm. what deserves more attention? Mm -hmm. And how do you draw them in? I know it's easy to get somebody who's already perhaps mm -hmm. interested in a particular mm -hmm. field, mm -hmm. but the unattached person who may just be somewhere in the community okay. on the block doesn't know that they okay. possess well, this we talent. Have, we use our events to gather data and to source personnel. So for instance, the National Arts Festival um, it has a component where we do a showcase. We select a community and we do a showcase in the community with the persons who can sing, who can dance, um, who are involved in theater. After that, when we collect that data, we, we, we find out, okay, this community, everybody in the community seems to be involved in some form of, um, let's say, steel pan. So, CDF now says, okay, so we will offer steel pan training in canneries, and presently that's what we're doing. We're offering steel pan yes. training in canneries, and let's see how we can build the capacity there, um, get persons involved, get them engaged. Um, so we do steel pan, it's not just the practical, so we do theory, and we go in there during the summer, 
and we monitor and um, we do our assessment and see how the project goes. Um, so we started in Canaries and that is beginning to build and the collaboration is growing where they want to have their uh, acquire mm -hmm. steel pans and of course they merged with Sufre, so, so it's Sufre and Canary, so you have Sufcan mm -hmm. and I think the first time they attempted, uh, I think it was a panorama, they came forth and so that stimulates them and also we take that same steel pan um, from Canaries they performed at um, in Monrepo last year at the Lowers. So, and they played um, music of the Lowers on the steel pan. So that was another element that we added. And we showed them another place where they can use their talents. So what we have done is sort of created this spiral where we try to connect everything, connect the training with um, um, giving you the opportunity to perform, allowing you to sort of learn to fish so that you can build capacity and so that is what we're, we're <coughs> working on in terms of our training and our development and we use the events to gather that so let's say we go into ancillary and we discover that there's a brilliant visual artist okay what can we do in this community to develop the visual arts and where they can use that talent to earn a livelihood so we're really trying to let people see how um, you could have a livelihood, cultural livelihoods. There's another project that is coming on. I don't want to speak about it too much where we are working within a particular region where it, it is really to help with livelihoods. We are collaborating with another ministry um, to help persons use the cultural forms within the region, create entertainment around that, provide training in the arts. So we're doing several things at the same time and allowing them to take that and run with it. And um, this is basically our thrust, our trend. So if you look at our tagline, it says creativity, innovation, collaboration, and community. And that's basically what we're, we're working towards. And all of the other agencies were all coming together to collaborate to achieve that. And I think what's most important that CDF is doing now is that education component that we are mapping with the training. I just want to remind our viewers that you can <coughs> call in now. Our lines are open, 468-2162, and you can also send us your questions on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Now, with so CDF used to go heavily into schools. So are you now simply community-based? Is that the focus now, mm -hmm. or are you still in schools? No, um, we were not heavily in schools. We work for the Margaret Festival. We do a schools component. So you... A number of schools become interested, primary schools, infant schools, preschools. So we work with them to put on the festival. But what we felt as a CDF, in order to ensure that your education in the arts and culture begins at the core, which is through your school children who are impressionable, who are apt to learn in, we felt that if you target that audience, then a lot of your work would have been done because they will be the flag bearers in the next 10, 15, 20 years, if you like. They will be the flag bearers. So if you're able to inculcate in them what the, an appreciation for St. Lucia's arts and culture, then within the homes, the children come, and it's, it's a, almost like a marketing tool. How do you get your, the parents to buy Kellogg's conflicts vis-a-vis buying a cheaper brand like the IGA brand? It's through the children. So the children go home and they begin to relate those stories. The larger blessed story, the bowl up. They begin to relay those things. So then they begin to raise that awareness in the homes. And for us, that is a route to get into the, elder, the elders within our community because at this stage, um, it's for us to now change mindsets change mindsets because in the past um, even parents um, children go to secondary school now you have they've introduced in school theater arts a parent may say okay more fair culture cannot do anything for you it's not a job. do anything for <laughs> it's you not a job. you know you'll get a gig but there are livelihoods in the arts there are livelihoods within the cultural fair and we would like persons to understand that and for us to do that to achieve that you have to educate 
and it is through our training programs, through our heightened public awareness, going into the schools, going into communities, speaking to persons, putting on events that speak to what you would want to educate them in, whether it be an art form, whether it be our icons. But when you, you know, get the private sector involved now, because to that well, livelihood could mm -hmm. be, for example, Little Folk Tale, as we mm -hmm. were saying off camera, what about a movie? Yes. But they would need people to invest yes, absolutely. in order to, to make absolutely. that happen. So how do we now begin to even change the mindset? Persons in the private sector, people who may just be able to, mm -hmm. you know, they have a little extra money, but never think of that as an <laughs> investment. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that is slowly changing. Um, I must talk about one of our, our biggest sponsors and collaborators, um, B Walk Mall. Um, it has been almost five years now that they've supported the three years consecutively the Laos Seance in Rodney Bay uh, between the malls. Um, good event, very good mm -hmm. event. Yes. yes. Um, and our exhibitions for emancipation, believe it or not, B Walk is a, is a supporter of that. So you're beginning to see, and it, I suppose it's beneficial to them. You have an exhibition in a the mall, there's a lot of foot traffic. Okay, and that foot traffic, even though I come to an exhibition, I will still stop by yes. access. And we window shop. Yes, back. Back and say, yes. oh, I wanted that bag, you know. And that sort of spending power and creating, creating that buzz and, and that turnover. So you begin to see that. And so um, with this year again, places like Kilago, with their support of, of the production, um, I must mention um, this um, other organization, another called CAFRA, because of the issues that in the play related to women, mm -hmm. their, their support as well. So we're beginning to see a shift. We have, um, I mean, a long supporter of CDF uh, for, for a very long time, Lucilek. Lucilek. Yes, Lucilek. Yes. They have been with us for eons and they continue to support the work that we do. Lucilek, uh, Bank of St. Lucia. So um, we're beginning to see that shift and it's making people understand and see how th you can maximize that. And I mean, the world has caught on and, and know that entertainment and the arts, this is a way to, to reach the people. And this is a way to get things. Um, if you have a brand of soda, why would you put um, a famous footballer on? Why would you put a famous singer I mean, for years we saw that with Pepsi and Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. and so we be, they begin to understand that 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 relationship, and that's what we're working towards. And that is also part of our education and educating the artists about. It's not just about my talent; that is fifty percent. But how do I manage that? How do I become an entrepreneur? How do I manage my my affairs? I make, let's say, ten thousand dollars doing a job. What do I do with that? How do I reinvest that in myself and my advancement? And how do I find another avenue in terms of allowing my brand to continue? And it's all of those things that we're working towards with our collaborators, creative industries, places like Teepa. So that is that we're moving along those lines. I'd just like to add to that. Um I think um, in recent times, the CDF has been able to show the, the, the impact that the arts has on even some of our societal ills. We did a program called um, Sound, Soundwave, which is a music training program. Yes. We were able to take at least 50 young persons who were unemployed. Some of them were just sitting on the blocks. They had the talent, many of them, but there was there was no avenue that was presented for them to access it. Um, we took them into life skills training. We took them into sound engineering, music theory, a number of areas, the business mm -hmm. of music. So you found at the end of a year, we were able to graduate at least 47 of those 50 young persons who would have ordinarily sat on the block doing nothing. Well, of course, you know what happens to an idle mind sitting on the block Absolutely. you know so for for us an investment in the arts is so important because if you can invest in those young minds 
a lot of your problems would have been resolved or solved, you know. Because imagine some of the young men that were there at the, at the music program, or participated in the music program. You wake up on an ordinary morning, you have nothing to do. Obviously, the negative will become attractive to you because that's all you are faced with, the negativity that surrounds you. And that investment like, through a lifeline to a lot of them, it gave them something to grab onto. And would you believe it that a lot of them now have formed their own bands and are mm. playing at weddings, are playing yeah, at the hotels, hotels, are creating their own events. So we have created this livelihood out of just the training that we did for this program. And this is where the CDF would want to go to ensure that we can impact lives. We can create livelihoods. We can get that understanding, that education of what the arts can do for even our GDP, for our societal issues. And these are the, the things that the arts can do. And once we can get people to understand those things, then a lot of our societal issues would have been resolved. We're going to the final three minutes uh, mm -hmm. of the program. Listen, if you have any final questions, we'd also like to invite you to give any closing comments. We certainly show that our, our viewers and those who've been following us on our social platforms were mm -hmm. quite engrossed in what you had to say. We didn't really get them participating in the program mm -hmm. today, but we're happy that they were actually part of our program. So listen, any final questions? For I don't want to know about the marketing because that's one thing a lot of people believe that CDS should become more involved in. Uh, the marketing of um, a talent. talent. Uh, so you may perhaps from one of your sessions identify you know, a potential Rihanna somewhere. Uh, does the CDF within its mandate make that sort of accommodation? This is where the collaboration comes mm -hmm. in. It is not within our mandate to market. It's, our, it's within our, money, in our mandate sorry, to identify the talent and to train that talent. And that talent, we, the likes of Export St. Lucia, the likes of um, creative, industries. creative Industries, the likes of SLTA, Event St. Lucia, we can forge alliances with them that would create that sort of platform where this talent would now be marketed. A then um, segment, for example, we have planned training coming up very soon for the guys that sing on that rhythm. We are going to do training with them, brand image, life skills, and a number of areas we're going to train them in. But we can't go out there marketing them. It's the job of the other agencies. So this is where the collaboration comes in. We work together for the holistic good of St. Lucia. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, Junior, any closing comments from you? Um, just to say that um, CDF is an organization that is really towards the training, development of the artists and the arts in St. Lucia, and also to preserve that what we deem as St. Lucia, whether it be traditional or things that we have created out of the tradition. And uh, is this essence of who we are that will put us on the world stage and that will make us known we can't be somebody else but we can be who we are and we can put ourselves in a position where we produce a quality and a standard that would leave the world asking us for more but we would like to say again that um we're not quite where we'd like to be but we are making inroads, we are making strides, we are working assiduously to ensure that we can achieve the mandate with the resources that are presented. We would like to get more resources, but with what we are given, we try to do the best that we can to ensure that we can impact lives, we can change the cultural landscape, we can develop persons, we can develop the arts, we can develop grow St. Lucia's culture. Thank you, Ramona Henry Wynn, Executive Director of the Cultural Development Foundation, and Junior Frederick, the Director of Events and Production. Please have a question for you. Uh, do okay. You, do you feel like I do that um, Laros gets much more prominence than Marguerite? 
Uh, I know for this reason. It's probably maybe they can answer that as well. I think so. I, for some reason, there seems to be more energy around La Wars, but I think more participation be, for La Marguerite because school is in. You get more of the, the children coming up with another display, but there's more energy around La Wars. I have that to give it. That depends on what size you have your perspective. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. if you're yeah. a La Marguerite, you will have a particular view. Mm -hmm. If you're somebody who's a Laos, you'll have, have a particular, particular view. view. Yeah. We, we, we call in it. We, we're Margaret. We're very mm -hmm. Margaret. Yes. But we call in it. There seems to be more the energy for Laos. With Laos, you have more groups participating yes. in the festival. Uh -huh. So obviously, you have more groups. They're coming from more communities, so there'll be a heightened energy. With Margaret, you have fewer groups, although we try, we're working on growing them. But you have a greater participation from the schools because school is on during yes, Margaret, whereas yes. for La Rose, school is closed. So whereas Margaret, La Rose has an energy, the energy for Margaret is within the school system. But historically, that filters in. historically mm -hmm. the, remember the La Rose were the people who were being by rum shops um, and creating that. Remember, yes. yes, remember they were at loggerheads with the church. And the Margaret was always the seen as a sort of an aristocracy, aristocracy, <laughs> more refined. I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in a sense, that has filtered on the Laos are buoyant. Mm -hmm. It's about spectacle. The Margaret are very yes. Um, no, I understand it now. We yes. understand. Get but we you. need to form a, our group. Yes. So we sure. will not have to. I need yes. to get out of there. Maybe yeah. we need yes. to form a group yes. within yes. the government. I need to get out of there. You know, like that. For both um, flowers. Yes, for yes. both. Yes. I think that's across the board. Even the ministers joining in as yes. well. I love that idea. You know, to lead the charge. Yes. I need to get out of the way, and I think both of our guests really described it very aptly. That's all the time we have on our program today. We're certainly happy that the two of you are able to come in, and you really brought the CDF into greater perspective. and. I'm sure the general public would know that you do much more than probably what they see and what meets the eye. I'd like to thank you once more. Lisa, it's been a good day. Thank it's you. It's been a wonderful day. Yeah, thanks for having and us. Thanks for having thanks us. For having us. That's our program for today. In Focus, you can join us for another program next week. You guys have made us so proud. Unbelievable. The comments that I'm getting even from t after tonight's show, I don't know, lost for words. So big, big applause. This is the second time, obviously, I'm seeing the show, and I can see it again. We're getting a lot of requests from St. Lucia to put on a lot more, perhaps going around the island, um, Choiseul, Soufre, Grosely. So it is something that we're actually Gifford. working on. Gifford, yes, of course. Actually, actually we're working on, um, at this point in time, um, behind the scenes. So, you know, hats off to you guys. And... Um, I just want to let you all know that we are extremely, extremely proud of you. Every single one. From the management team, the band. I mean, I got Michael um, Boothman talking to me there and telling me he did not realize that there was a live band there. He had not seen or heard of that for God knows how long. He's actually in front of waiting for me. He said he's just so impressed. So hats off to you guys. The dancers, the songs. I mean, I don't know.